Alrighty, y'all. Well, welcome. Thanks for making the time to join today. My name is Matt Reynolds. I'm on our support team here at IDX Broker. So if you call in with some technical questions, there's a good chance you'll get me. And I hope that we can uh, expand on our topics today here and look forward to speaking with you. I always like to start these off by just asking where everybody's from. There's a chat box or a question box on the right side. If you want to type in the state you're from or the city you're from, that would be awesome. Just going to give it another minute here, and then we will jump right into the presentation. Awesome. Got some people from California, Georgia, North Carolina, Arizona, Tennessee, Tri-State, Texas, all over. Well, welcome, everybody. Again, my name's Matt. I'll be hosting the webinar today. This is going to be on um, one of our back-to-basic topics. This quarter, we're kind of covering some of the general topics to help get you up and running if you're new to IDX Broker. Also, if you're an existing customer and you're just looking to make sure you're fully utilizing your account, this webinar will be for you. Today, we're going to cover a few topics here. We're going to cover IDX broker pages mainly, and we're going to talk about wrappers and what those are, how they make your pages look like your website. We'll go over the various IDX broker pages that everyone will have available to them in their account. And then uh, at the very end, we'll cover saved links. These are pages that you can create. Um, you can predetermine the search criteria and be able to show listings that meet those criteria, then easily add those pages to your site. Great way to generate um, SEO as you add more landing pages to your website. And then at the end, we'll, we'll of course get back to questions. Also, as we go along, I'm joined here today with my support team member, Brian. He's gonna be answering chats. So go ahead and type in questions if you have them as we go along. And if anything gets missed or you want to wait till the end, I'll make sure to answer a few questions out loud. We also have a support channel. We'll give you the email that you can send questions to. So if you don't get to it today um, and you think of something later, we'll be able to answer it at another time. So I'm going to go ahead and switch gears here and get out of this PowerPoint and move over my IDX broker account. Feel free to follow along if you are logged into your account. Um, just to remind you, you can go to idxbroker.com. In the upper right corner, there's a login button. But you can also sit back and just relax. And we will be emailing a copy of this uh, webinar out to anyone that's uh, registered. So if you want to watch it at a later time and actually go through the steps later and just watch today, that's totally fine. When you're logged into your account, you'll see this dashboard. Um, just point out a couple things. There may be some notifications that are popped up here. You can go ahead and click the X to close those out. And then also you'll notice it'll say signed in as with your name and an account number in the top right corner. If you ever call for support, this is a, a number that we may ask you for just so we can look you up uh, quickly in the system. So just pointing that out in case you ever wonder where the account number is. And then you'll kind of see this general landing page, the dashboard. The bulk of what we're going to be doing is going to be in the sidebar here. If you're not seeing those options, there may be a plus sign that you'll have to click just to expand out the menu. So we're going to go ahead and jump in. Um, I've also got my demo website up. We're using my website is on WordPress. Our tools will work with most website builders. Um, if you're ever curious if it's compatible, feel free to contact our support team. But all of the main ones, the popular ones, WordPress, Squarespace, Wix, GoDaddy Builder, things like that are going to be compatible. This isn't going to cover, today's topics aren't going to cover actually using those website builders. But I just wanted to mention what I'm using in case you were curious. So if you're following along, uh, first we're going to go over wrappers. And these are going to be in the design tab, and then website, and then wrappers. Now, when we create an account for you, um, when you're first emailed your login information, you're going to most likely already have a wrapper created for you. The only reason we wouldn't be able to make one is if your site um, wasn't live when you set up the account. And what the wrapper is, is this takes this, these really um, unstyled basic pages that have all the IDX tech integrated into them, but they don't, they don't look pretty. They don't look like your website yet. And then the wrapper takes your website style and makes it look like your website. So I'll show you what I mean here. On my website, I've already added this search page. I've called it advanced search. And you'll see if somebody went on my site and went to this page, they would just see this white search page. It's going to work great. It's going to function and give the data, but it's not very pretty, right? And we want it to look like our website. 
So let me show you what it looks like when I apply the wrapper that I've already created. So now we go from this, I'm gonna go ahead and refresh to this. And let me close out this sign up form here. There we go. So now you see it's matching my site style. I've got my header from my website and it looks like this page is just like the rest of my website. So that's the cool thing about wrappers. Now all I can now all I need to do is add this page to my site and I'm ready to go. People can start searching for properties. If you have more questions about the wrappers, we have a lot of support resources, articles and videos that we've covered this topic in and you can always call our support team. So I just wanted to show you the wrapper today so that you could see this is a good starting point. Um, but it's not what we're going to cover um, in bulk today. So definitely reach out to us if you have questions about creating the wrapper or if it doesn't look like you have one, and we'd be happy to assist. So now we're going to go over what the bulk of the presentation is on, um, which is IDX Broker Pages. To get to these, you're going to go into your IDX account, click on Design Website Page Templates. And you'll see these pages are already created for you. They're organized um, by category. So we've got our search pages that would let your website visitors do searches for listings on the MLS. We've got our results pages, everything from just your listings that have already been organized. We call those featured. And then we've got our details pages. That would be what a listing uh, would actually look like when it's clicked on. So you do a search, you get a results page, and then you click a listing, you get a details page. Then we've also got some additional tools um, like the mortgage calculator. That's a nice page you could add that would give people like a quick calculator so they could determine their monthly mortgage. Contact pages, those are kind of self-explanatory. Um, it's really nice to just add a quick contact form on a menu item, for example. And then when your uh, visitors fill that form out, you would get a notification that they signed up as a lead. We're not going to cover leads today, but there is a leads tab and that's where the leads would go. And we do have resources on all of the lead topics as well. Just to briefly go over the, what the other pages are before we dig a little deeper. User pages. We actually have the ability in IDX to allow your leads to sign up for like a mini account. And what that allows them to do is just keep track of properties and save searches that they care about. So it's a nice way that you can see what they're searching for and be able to provide better service for your leads. And also then they have a way to organize all of the searches and properties that they care about. Down here in the other pages, sitemap, that's a way that you can get a quick sitemap of all of your IDX pages. And that's a good tool to have for SEO. You can submit your sitemap to search engines like Google, and that tells the search engine to basically check your site for all these pages so that you rank in search results. Lastly, these couple pages may or may not be visible for you or clickable. It would just depend on your account type. Roster page is going to be available to anyone that has a multi-user account. And that's going to allow you to feature agents from your office in a roster. And if you click on the agents, you could see their listings. Again, if you're a single agent account, that wouldn't be clickable. And then market reports, that's only going to be available for platinum users. That's a really nice way to have a, a report of like a snapshot of a, a specific area. Um, so that page lets your visitors type in a zip code or a city and actually see like a snapshot of what's going on in that area and see some demographic data. Okay, so that's kind of an overview, but now let's actually get into a little bit of show and tell so I can show you a little bit more about the pages. Definitely want to add a search page to your website. Out of anything to add, at least having a search is gonna set you up for success because it's gonna allow people on your site to do searches. And then if they find a listing or a property they care about, they can fill out a contact form and you would get their information. So that's where we see a ton of turnover and, and people signing up as leads in our clients' accounts. So the one that I would recommend everyone looks at is the advanced search. That's the one I pulled up earlier and I still have it up here. And for any of these pages, if you just click on the word, it will actually open up the page. So advanced search, click on that, it will open up in a new window. And then you'll see it's kind of organized. It depends on which MLS you're a part of in, in terms of which fields are gonna show up. At the top here, I've kind of got my basic fields like min and max price, bedrooms, bathrooms. But down at the bottom, your page may look a little different depending on which MLS you're associated with. So for example, 
my recreation field, if I'm in Florida or California where pools are pretty common, I may have a field like that. But if I'm up in um, Oregon where we are, that may not be as much of a, a selling point for, for property. So it may not be a field that's, that's commonly added in the MLS feed. Now, all of these fields can be configured, which is another reason why this page is a nice one to add, because you can customize this depending on what people are looking for on your site. So let me show you where, where you would actually do the, the field customization. If we're back in our page templates, you find the advanced search row. And if you go all the way to the right, you'll see fields. And if we click on fields, we can actually edit each type of property and which fields are coming through those property types. Obviously, like a single family home may have different fields than vacant land. Um, there may be more land specific land use related fields that are going to come up. So this is just loading here for a second. And now that it's up, you'll see we've got the left and right side of the page that's mirroring what is um, showing on the live page. And so I can really easily drag these fields. I can delete fields by clicking the garbage can that I don't want to show up. And then over here on the, uh, the very right side, it says available fields. I can click the plus sign to add a field that I care about that isn't already showing up. So you can see condition just popped up. And then I would just want to save my property type. And then you'll see now that I've added condition in the left, we'll go back to our actual page. It's not on the page yet until I refresh. And then once it loads the new layout, you will see it's on the top left here. The first time it's just got to go and, and save the new layout. So it may take a second. And there we go. We've got condition added. So those are the changes I just made. And you can see it's, it's instantaneous. So definitely configure this to your preferences and your need. You know, you may decide you, you don't like how it has three fields on the right and multiple on the left. So you can balance it out, things like that. So let's go back to the page templates. If you were following along, you can click back to pages or you can go back to design website page templates. So that was the advanced search. Now, one other thing I wanted to point out too is if you add any of these search pages, you can actually access the other pages and I'll show you what I mean. So here's my advanced search page. You can see the other pages are actually at the top here, right? There's uh, there's menu items for this page. And so if I just decide to add the advanced search, I've also given my visitors the ability to do the other pages as well. So that will save you some time. Now you can link out these other pages. Like I could add basic up here on, the, on my uh, website menu. But if you just want to save time in real estate with your uh, website, just go ahead and add one of the pages. And you can also configure this in the settings. So if you if you decide like, I don't want to add the address search page, that's totally fine. Just to go over these other ones real quick, listing ID, it's a great one if people have an MLS number and they want to look up the, the listing. But also, I recommend that you as the client um, use this page if you're trying to determine when a listing was added into the IDX system, or you just need to look up some details really quickly and you don't want to log into your MLS portal. Um, this is a great way to just go ahead and type in a number and, and find a, a property. Address, same thing. You can look up by a property type and then type in the address. That's a quick way to find a listing. Your visitors may use this as well. If they, they're driving by property and they see a for sale sign, they may want to know more about it and see they find your website and want to see more information about it. And map search, of course, is a nice map. If you're zoned in on your area, there will be actual listings here. I think it's based on my location right now. But yeah, normally there would be map pens and things here for you to click on the listings. And then basic search is just like advanced, except it doesn't have all of the fields at the bottom. So if you really just want a, a really simple search, you just want the basic fields, min and max price, bedrooms, bathroom, square foot, nothing MLS specific, go ahead and add the basic search page. But uh, I do see a lot of people want to add those MLS specific fields, statuses and things like that. So that's why the advanced search is kind of king in that way. Okay, so let's go back to our IDX account to the page templates. And I'm just going to cover a, a couple of the, these other settings. There's no expectation for you to learn all this during this webinar. There's a ton of settings to go over. And if you're ever getting stumped or have a question, you know, don't hesitate to reach out. I will just go over what these kind of columns mean. So preferences is what you think. It's, it's page preferences and settings. 
layout is going to be the actual way that the page looks. We're constantly developing and adding new templates. And we, this year, we are slated to add a new set of templates. But basically, that's what the, the page looks like. And so what I'm going to show you, for example, is if we go down to the results page and we click the edit, and this is the edit under the layout column, we can see our available templates to choose from. So I'm currently using this template called the Home Atlas, but there's also a mobile first results template that I could choose. And these are the newer recommended templates. We do have some older legacy templates. These can still be used. Just know that we're not um, doing like new development on them, but they still work and they're still function. So if you decide to use one of these, maybe you like the, the, the way the listings look, that's totally fine. To activate, you would just click the activate button. And I'll show you what I mean by the different templates here. So I'm going to go back to my search page. I'm just going to do a quick search. And then I'll see that the results come back. So this is the layout. This is the home atlas layout with the map on the left and the listings on the right. Now, if I wanted to change this, I could go back to the edit and edit the layout. I'll turn on mobile first so you can see. So this is home atlas. And then this is mobile first. It's a little bit different design. This one has like a map at the top and then the listings are kind of down below. So totally personal preference. These would be similar to like a website providing their theme, right? Um, this is like a similar concept here. And like I mentioned, we are working on developing some newer templates, which are going to be a little bit more modern looking and just kind of be ready to go out of the box in terms of design. But any of these pages can be customized um, if you're working with a designer. There is a custom CSS section as well as those wrappers that would let your designer write some custom code. So if you're looking at a page and you're saying like, I really want this button to be red. Uh, I really want these boxes to be rounded. It's all doable right now with any plan that anyone's on. So if you do have more questions about customizing the look, if it's not looking how you want it, um, we can give you some pointers and kind of get you in the right direction. So that was the layout. Now we can also just cover briefly the preferences. So the preferences, if you go to the pages and click the edit under the preference column, you will see that there are some different settings here. SEO settings, these are great. You can go in and add, pad these pages with meta keywords and description so that search engines know what these pages are about. You can also do a page title. That's what would show up at the top, like in the browser uh, tab here. So if you add a page title, then that would change what shows up at the top there. And then lead registration. This, I don't know if you saw this uh, earlier, but when I first went to my search page, a little sign up box came up. That's what the lead registration settings are. So this allows you to set a number of pages that can be viewed for each type of page before a sign up box would come up. And you can decide, do I wanna make this forced? They have to fill it out to keep searching, or I wanna make it optional. They can click a little X and, and keep searching. So this is back with the lead registration preferences. So uh, again, this is a sign up box. This would give your leads the ability to fill out a sign up form to keep searching. You can customize the message, make it more of a, a call to action. Um, so say to keep getting awesome you know, leads to your inbox or to uh, work with an awesome realtor, fill out the sign up form now. So that's what that setting does. Okay, so those are kind of the basics of pages. Now I. Again, I'm not going to be able to cover how you would actually add the pages to all the different website providers just because there are so many. But I am using WordPress, as I mentioned, and I just want to show you where I added the page, because now that you know more about the pages, then the next logical step is, well, how do I get it on my site? What I did is I created a menu item and in WordPress, there's an option to add a link to another website. And then I just typed in the link for this page. And so you can see I've added, these are actually all IDX broker pages that I've added. And so that was, that's one place where I would recommend you add these. The other place that you could add is like, you could create a button. I don't think I have an example here. Let's just say that this properties was a button. I could add a link to that button. So those would be the two places that people often add IDX broker pages. So those are pages. And then the last thing I wanna show you is our saved links feature. Now what saved links are is they're search pages where you go ahead ahead of time and fill out the search criteria. 
So you're going to go in and say, I want to determine what properties should be showing up. And then I just want to make a link so people can see those properties. We're going to go over that in more detail to actually access save links. We're going to click design, website, saved links. And then you'll see I've uh, created some. And most likely in your account, you're not going to have any in here yet unless you've already been playing around with this. But we're going to go ahead and create a new link. And that's going to be in the upper right corner. And then I'm going to pick a search page to use to make the link. And you'll see our list of all of our search pages that we've referenced before. Again, I, I still think the advanced search is your, your way to go because it does have all of those MLS fields. So once you click that and click next step, you'll be able to actually fill out the form. Now, keep in mind, we're just filling the form out. The actual result is going to be a link that we can click on that will show the listings. And, and we will get to that in one second here. So maybe what I want to do is I'll just put in a city here and I'll just do Miami. And why don't we throw in a max price of 500000 And that's all I'm going to do for this search. I'm going to go ahead down to the bottom and click next step. And I'm going to do Miami test. And you can see, again, we've got SEO settings here. So think of the save link as a landing page. So you definitely, if you're using SEO best practices, you want to add keywords to these pages. So search engines know what these pages are about. The more of these that you can add, the more chances of your site ranking as, as Google's seeing that you have a lot of relevant content on your site. And then when we're done, uh, we're going to go ahead and click Save and Manage. And then I'm going to search for my link I just created. We've got Miami Test. And I'm going to go ahead and click on the right side under the Tools column. There's an eyeball. And if you hover on that, it says Preview. So if I click on that, I'll actually get a preview of my page. And the Save Links use the Results page template. So you'll see we're, we're back to this Home Atlas Results page where we've got the map on the left and the listings on the right. And keep in mind, I'm using demo data on my account. So these homes, um, that's why you may see some like similar images. But So now that we've got this save link, I can actually add this to my site. And then I've given people the ability to have kind of a curated experience of listings that I've created. You'll see here that there's this one I've already created called Miami Ranch Style Homes. I'll show you that is right here, this link, Miami-Dade County Ranch Style. And I've already added it to my site as a link. So when I click on this, I get my 37 listings that are in this county that are ranch style homes. So really great way to do this. You can add like a menu item that's called neighborhoods and you can feature neighborhoods in your area. You could do things like waterfront properties or golf, golf course properties. The, the sky's the limit here. So we definitely recommend, you know, at least adding a search page and adding a few of these save links. That way you're able to just kind of give people a head start and what they're looking for. Now, I want to go over just a couple things about the save links. So after you've created one, you can actually go back here and hover under the tools. There's a magnifying glass. You can edit the search criteria. So, you know, this one, maybe I said... I did 500,000, but that was that was too low or too high. I could go back and change that. Maybe I want to add a different city in here. I can go back and change that. And then once you save it, you're able then to get the updated information. But you don't have to update the link. The link's going to stay the same. So the link that I've added to my site, I don't have to go back and change this. It I'd actually is dynamic. It will just change the page once you save it. And again, you know how we talked about those lead registration rules. You can apply those to these save links as well. And so this would be a sign up box that would pop up and it would allow people to fill out a contact form in order to keep viewing the listings. Something that's totally optional that you can configure. And then preferences. This is where you can edit the SEO settings. So you'll see a lot of the settings and the, the items are repetitive and they mirror like the save links mirror what's in the results pages. So. All right. And then one other thing I did want to mention on the page templates, let's go back to design website and then page templates. Of course, we want to give you the ability to show your own listings and we want you to be able to prominently show them. And so we actually have a, a results page that's called the feature page. 
Now, this is going to be your listings only on the page. And it's determined by your agent ID that's been added into the account. And so upon setup, we'll try to get this all configured for you so that you can go in and click this featured page and just see your properties, your listings. If you want to show your other colleagues listings or you're the broker and you want to show all the office listings, you would just need to make sure you're on the right account level to be able to do that. And then you would choose the different agents in the account settings to be able to show their listings on this page. Your results will actually always come up in a searches at the top, just a quick aside. So if somebody does a search for, you know, a home in Coral Gables and it's in this price range and that your listing needs that, it's always going to show up at the top of those search results. We always want to help you prominently feature your listings. So these would be two ways to to make sure that you're showing your listings. And you can then copy this link and add it up here in your menu as well on your website. So those would be kind of the big three that I see people add is a search page, a save link. And then if you have listings, a featured page so that you can show off your listings. Yeah, so those are kind of pages in a nutshell. Just to wrap up what we talked about. We went over wrappers. Again, wrappers make your IDX pages look like your website. Without a wrapper, the pages work great, but they're just kind of boring. They're just white pages. So once you add a wrapper or once our support team helps add a wrapper, the pages will look just like your website. Uh, We also covered the various pages that are available to you in your account. You can go in and configure the fields that show up on these pages. You can also add one of the search pages and you'll be able to get access to the other pages. So that saves you some time. We also covered the different layouts that there are different layout options depending on which page you're you're searching for. And then we also covered preferences, which would be things like SEO settings and uh, lead sign up like pop up boxes. We call those lead registration settings. Um, The last thing we covered was the save links and that those were in the save links area. This is a quick way for you to make a landing page, a predetermined search page, and add these to your site to help generate traffic and SEO results. So I will go back here and open it up for any questions here. I'm going to pull up my chat box real quick. And I know Brian's been answering these as we've gone along, but if you do have any questions now, feel free to drop those in. Gordon had a question. Yeah, so Gordon's question was, can you give an example of how you would add a link to a page to make it function? So if I'm understanding, Gordon, I think the question is, how does the the link start working? Like, what do you have to do? The link is already going to work. So those, all of those pages we covered, all of the save links, they're going to work. Um, it's just a matter of making them publicly available to your to your clients and on your site. So for example, you just need to add them in your menu item. Yeah, it looks like Brian's answered all of our questions throughout. If anything else does come up, um, we do have several support channels. So um, you'll see we have our email here, which is help at idxbroker.com. You can call us at 800-421-9668. And you can also check out our knowledge base. This would be uh, where we have support articles with videos added. That's support.idxbroker.com to access that. And then uh, our YouTube channel as well. We have all of these webinars and other videos um, added up there as well. And for future webinars, here's our webinar site. Again, just want to thank you for making the time today to uh, join us. And everyone here will be getting a copy of the webinar so you can go back through and, and review this later or just give us a call. And we look forward to talking with you. Again, thanks for joining and I hope everybody has a good rest of their week and uh, we'll talk to you soon.